Guys, welcome back to another episode of The Property Pod. If you are a big fan of the show, you may have been listening to some of the mini episodes we've been uploading this week. In the uh, studio with me today, it's just me and Johnny Mac. It's very quiet in here, mate. It is, and the, uh, the office is completely empty as well. It's, it's a bit of a ghost town, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Yep. So right. we've, we've got run of the roost. <laughs> we can do whatever we want. We can put on Pat's fur coats. We can grab his goblet. We'll... Actually, we should take sneaky photos with these goblets oh, this and then chaos. send them through to him, Snapchat style. <laughs> and <clears throat> we'll do some durries in the uh, the street as well with yeah, all the company cars. Out. Yeah, it's going to be sick, brother. It's yeah, going to be super yeah, sick. We got this. <laughs> no, so we're we're flying solo. We should be professional. We actually, it'd probably be more shocking to Pat if we were professional and oh, did I was, some real work. I was half tempted to just grab out all our favourite pieces of Marvel and just talk about that for the property pod. Well, <laughs> did you hear the mini episode that I uploaded Yeah, earlier? that Well, that's that's what brought it to mind. That, that's a pretty cool find. Oh, what a find. Yeah, yeah. Because what was his story? He was the social media director for Marvel for Studios. For Marvel Studios, yeah. Like so, a decade. So if you haven't listened to it, Pat's over at Inmark Connect. He got a keynote speaker over there who would have been my man crush if I uh, had the chance to go and chat to someone and just get some inside goss on all things I'm interested in. But he'd run the social media campaigns from Marvel Studios from all the way back to, from Iron Man mm. all the way through to Black Panther. So basically phase one, two and three. Just smoked it. Well, we think too. He said when Iron Man first came out, how many years ago is that now? I think it's ten years. I think this has been like ten or eleven years that the, all this has happened. So, so that's nearly say two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah, that right. sounds about right. I f- the first iPhone was like two thousand five. So even social media back then, you know, it wasn't going really taken off. He but, probably was know. advertising on MySpace or something. Yeah, actually. <laughs> But picking his favourite songs as well to attach to the profile. This is going to age Iron Man 1, but he mentions in the truck on the very first bit where before it blows up, he mentions, oh, don't, I don't want to see this on your MySpace page. So oh, if you go way right. back, MySpace was There you go, thing, so, so that's probably where it, he first started. Yeah. Well, that's so, and then he, what did he say? It, it was, it finished up right at the end of the trilogy, wasn't it? That's yeah. right. The I last, can... The Avengers. Uh, he finished up before the Avengers. He finished oh, up it? at Black Panther. Which oh, was okay. Sorry, you just did say Just that. before Infinity War and just before Endgame. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty cool thing to have on your resume. Oh, man, it's an uh, awesome yeah. thing. And it wouldn't have existed when he got the job. No, nah, no. Nah, so his whole thing would have been evolving. And then by the time Black Panther finished up, like, that was it. That's where you yeah. broadcast movies. And now he's a guest lecturer at the University of Las Vegas. He's talking Marvel. I guess he's talking how he's proficient at Twitter and Instagram and all of the social medias, which... That's a pretty cool pivot. I remember when I was at uni, some stat came out and someone was saying that, because I was trained to be a teacher, all the kids that we taught, by the time they got to university, all the degrees or a lot of the degrees oh, would be jobs that didn't even exist. That's brutal, yeah. So it's quite amazing to think that... This guy's gone into a world where the jobs didn't exist and now they exist and he's a lecturer at uni for it. Well, that's where then I'd be interesting to see how they, let's just say he's, you know, the curriculum that he's supposed to be teaching, that basically would have to get updated every six months at least. Oh man, that was all that happened when you are a teacher. It was just, all right, we're having a curriculum day and you'd sit down <laughs> and you'd be like, what am I teaching? <laughs> You're like, God damn it. What? <laughs> but I guess if you think about that, what Pat's doing is it's a conference about real estate, but it's mm. also so much about technology and how mm. things are taking off. In another one of his discussions, he spoke with an Aussie, Kylie Davis. Yes. He, she was mentioning, have you heard of this thing, iBuyers? Yeah, so I listened to that interview and looked into it a bit more. So um, that's remarkable because that it, what it was was that she described that they're only going to be using uh, valuations based on um, data. So she was a previous. She used to work at Core Logic. Yeah, Core Logic. So for what you can do with Core Logic is they you can buy the reports, or if you've got access to it, you can pay forty one dollars, and it does like a uh, they call a desktop valuation. So it just grabs all the data that it has, yep. um, and then comes up with a price range. Um, and where actually where they use that is often if the um, the banks will reference that report um, when they're going to value the home. Yeah, for the sale, and so they have what's called a AVM. So um, that was a no S SVM standard no SD standard deviation AJK LMNOP. Oh, it's so good! It's so good to be alone. We can say whatever we want. So anyway, there's a range on it, and they give it a confidence range. So it'll say it'll be from like red light to green light. 
And depending upon if it's um, a high confidence range, usually the, the most they'll go with a, uh, with eight eight percent. So if it was a like hundred grand, I'll just use this easily. It's like between ninety two to one hundred and eight thousand dollars. Yep. Um, and then depending upon your financial situation and the location of the property, sometimes the banks will actually just use that report and not actually send out a formal valuer to go do an oh, assessment. Oh, okay. So say they're swamped with heaps of stuff to do and they don't have the valuer to be able to go and do it. They'll yep. be like, this data is useful enough. We trust the data. Boom, this is where we're at. Well, it's even not so much availability, but when we... I just recently got my house valued yep. and the guy came up, just printed off that report. He's like, oh, yeah, that'll be... Go for it. Oh, yeah, that's that. Yeah, so for now, though, we've done all these major renovations the second round we had to get a proper valuer to come through. come through and say i actually added value here you've so i couldn't quite figure out just yet with that i buyer is whether or not it was actually the company zillow that was purchasing it, or they were just giving access to pre-established purchases that were going to be like you send me this i will give you the cash yeah so that's what i was tr- i still haven't been able to figure out just yet but that's a remarkable disruption disruption, disruption. yes yeah so um but in some respects it's not too dissimilar than say I know I've got a bunch of clients that if you called me up and, go, and you said, I've got this property, I need to flog it, and it has to be cheap, man, I'll get to get 10 by, you know. Yeah, straight off the bat, yeah. You've got that in your database. Yep. This is kind of centralising the database into, if you need to move in this amount of time, mm. we'll give you this value, the desktop value as, you, as you've described yeah, it. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I was trying to describe it. We were walking the dog last night and we we're coming along the street. I said, oh, Pat's been with my partner. I said, oh, Pat's been... I wasn't talking to the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been. <laughs> hey, Izzy, can I tell you about this? <laughs> <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, so I'm talking to my partner and I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, Pat's been talking about this eye buyer thing. Yeah. Like, it sounds like this, this and this. Mm. And she's like, oh, so what, you can just move straight out of your house? I'm like, yep, you don't have to paint, you don't have to do any of this stuff. But mm. I don't really get it. I'll talk to the boys about it more. And I said, there'll probably be a full episode that we could put together. Thrash out, yeah. And thrash it out. And Pat will obviously... He's super motivated when he gets back after mm. his jet lag's over. Mm. Um, so that might be something we can talk about in the future. Yeah, well, one of the things that uh, she'd mentioned too is, see, in, in the States, the commission rates are much higher than Australia. So I did um, hear that, yeah. So we're, um, I don't think we got into it before, but see, it's much more common of, in a previous episode as I described that you've got um, this buyers and agents representatives. Now, normally in the States and globally, I think the commission rates will be up to about 5 to 6%. Yep. And then that's paid by the vendor. Then the... Open homes, for example, that happens are actually for agents, not yeah, buyers. Yeah, you were describing this to me the other yeah. day when we were just having coffee off air. Mm. You were saying that like basically all the agents will go to the open home, not that's it, the potential buyers. That's right. Yeah, and then they so well, a couple of my friends of mine um, scattered around the states now. They are like high end, you know, multi million dollar eight, you know, selling properties. But they'll seriously have you know Verve Cliff Co, the finest for meats and foods you could possibly get. Then they'll invite all the agents in the area yeah. to look at this house. And then the agents go out and grab their clients and then they organise like one-on-one inspections. So you don't have 50 people walking through these multi-mega mansions. You um, just have the people who can afford it. and then Yeah, that's and right. Yeah. yeah. So um, then often that comes with high-profile clients too because they don't want to be known. Well, they don't want to be having to reach out directly. So there's always that. You've always got to buyers and sellers agents generally. And that was where in Australia, for example, though, the commission rates can be on average, say, 2 to 3.5% or something. It's not as relevant. So because the, the costs of selling isn't as high as it would be in the States, we might not see that it gets as much traction here or relevance immediately that it's sort of, you know, making its and way. And I guess the market over there would be just so much bigger with the mass amount of people in comparison to what absolutely. our population is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and then another thing too she'd mentioned is that the challenge with that is that it really makes sense. If you, if you need to cash in your bank tomorrow and you need that certainty, okay, go for it. The only challenge is though is if on those desktop valuations, for example, that it doesn't know if you've got a, you know, sparkly bath or, you know, a vacuum system or like I'm just thinking it's some really odd stuff. Yeah, it's um, just literally taking it at face value and boom, here's your price. Mm. You could be worth 500000 for an example, but you're getting four twenty. Yeah, exactly. And yep. if you're in that position, you may just take that. Well, and, and that you said is like, you know, would you want to lose, you know, 10%, 20% of your value for the sake of saving an agent's commission? She, she, was, and she was like, no, nah, stuff that. Yeah. But, you know, it, but it is an interesting Yeah, technology. look, and yeah. I think Pat being over there and kind of getting eyes on all these different things that are coming through and what the future of real estate could be and what kind of technology is coming through. Like I think he said today, hopefully he'll have a new tech startup CEO that he'll be chatting to. So have you yeah. have you seen that Silicon Valley TV show at all? Oh, you guys keep telling me about it. I haven't watched it's it yet. It's so yeah. funny. It's so good. But I'm hoping that he's got someone like the people from <laughs> that on the um, 
on the podcast because that would be just brilliant. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. they're only twenty minutes. There, um, it's that Mike Judge who did. He was oh, a butthead and um, office space, office space, idiocracy. Yeah. So he's a very, uh, very funny, yeah, very good. dry human being. King of the Hill, I think, was yeah, his. Yeah, that as was well. his. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're we're currently waiting on Pat to to call us. He's maybe playing the craps tables, or he's doing something in Vegas, St. Penantella, or mm. one of the. Uh, Elvis, I know, he's, shows. I know he's caught up with Elvis Magic Mike, maybe. Oh, yeah, yep. Um, so what I thought we could do is while we're sitting here recording, we could talk about some feedback we've got from other listeners. Pat might jump in when he jumps in. If he doesn't, we'll, we'll carry just keep, on. we'll carry on. I know we've got a few emails that have come through. You've spoken to a few people. We even um, you were at an event the other day and someone... Yeah, yeah. So it was actually... Um, I went to a book launch. Yep. Um, Catherine Street, she's just released a, um, a new book called In The Loop. And yep. it's, de- it's dedicated to about how do you, if you've, if you've been in your career for a short while, how do you take yourself to the next level? Yep. Um, it was Start really a podcast. Yeah, clearly. exactly right. Yeah, she's, a, she's an amazing woman, does some really good work. So I was chatting with someone there and this is actually a good segue for what we are talking about just a minute ago about direct selling to the clients, right? Yep. So buyers and sellers. And she asked me, is, is off-market selling a thing? I said, well, of course, what, you know, what's the scenario? And what actually had happened is she's renting a house at the moment um, through an agency yep. and the, uh, the owner tracked down her name. Name, Facebooked it, found out where she worked, got all her details, and then contacted her directly and said, "Hey, I'm interested in selling my house. Would you be interested in buying it without the agent?" Ah, oh, so she's like kind of been stalked by the owner, in a sense. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, is that le- is it illegal? Not really. Is it creepy? I think so. Um, it's kind of interesting. Like yeah. it's it's probably from such a genuine, nice place of. You live in the place. It would be really easy if you wanted to buy it. Yep. And I'm going to give you first dibs at it. Absolutely, yeah. However, in the past, without these social medias and things like that, like would, that would, would have been very like, hard. I to guess do. you'd have to show up on the door, like knock, knock, knock. Like, hello, are you in the position to buy this house? Yeah, exactly. Well, there was a guy that I met in. He had a house in North Hobart. And it was just at the beginning of an upward, upward cycle in terms of price. And someone had knocked on his door, had went to him and go, said, oh, look, I'd be interested in buying it. And he's gone, yeah. And they've offered him a price. He sold it 30 days. He was out. And then one, he hadn't even lined up a new rental property. He thought, oh, if I rent, I'll be able to go get a house I want. But because he sold during an upward trend, well, by the time he, his property settled, the houses had already shifted upwards. So he couldn't even buy back into the same suburb that he left. So he ended up buying it. Like He had to go end up renting. And then it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And so it's kind of like the um, horror story of rent festing in a way. Absolutely, yeah. And it's that element that it's dangling a carrot and grabbing it before you think through the process. Yep. And this is a really good, this is an interesting scenario that we've just had recently. So one of my clients, we'd had it listed for sa- a property for sale in, in Risdon Vale. And just lo and behold, someone had caught wind in the area who'd been looking to buy in that suburb for like two years, found out that she was selling. So yep. she, they went and knocked on the door and said, hey, look, we heard you're selling. We're interested in buying the area. Are you selling? She said, "Yeah." And said, well, what, what do you want? Your dollar um, two eighty. He said, "All right, we'll buy it." And she's called me up and said, "John, I um, uh, I think I just sold my house." <laughs> so what do you mean? She said, "Oh, look with." And she, then she told me the story. And that's just fantastic. So what we'll often do with our agency is that if if we want if a private owner wants advice, we've got different pay structures to help with scenarios. So if we had it fully listed to go to market, but it didn't have to, right? Yep. So we adjust our commission and because our, our our services change. Yeah, so of course. Yeah, you're you're not giving yeah the full. We're, we're not we're not having to do the. Um, we're just so at this point, then it becomes about keeping the deal together, draw, drawing up the contracts. What she hadn't thought through though was that she hadn't actually. Um, she was intending to move to another suburb, but she hadn't got an agreement with the private seller, um, who she got introduced to by a friend to go buy that house yet. So. Um, what I've had to do in this case is we've had to slow it right down and go, right, before we even get a, a – I know we've, you've, we've made this verbal agreement, but before we put anything on paper, we've got to make sure that you don't get homeless all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a thing she – I mean, she got really excited, which is great, but she hadn't thought it through just yet. And a lot of the time in these um, situations when people sell quickly at, good, at a good price, they believe, is that they haven't realised, well, where do you go next? And there's so much to – I never knew b- before buying my house how getting finance and – you send off your contracts. Like it, it almost felt like, yep, boom, here, settlements this day, but then settlements often get pushed back. Yep. There's so many different things that come into play. Mm. So the, unless you've got someone that is willing to put you up for however long it may be. Good luck to you. Yeah, you could yep. be. Re- so, again, that's part of your job of kind of 
managing. Well, we had because the other thing too is because there was a private um, a private seller, we had to make sure that his his solicitor was happy with the terms. So I had to start with their solicitor being happy with the terms because they'd sent a contract that that was just look here's the terms for her to buy, and I looked at that contract and said this is not going to work even remotely. So we had to send that back, get all those details right with him first. Um, in the meantime, the purchases for her house were going, you know, every three to four days, hey, you know, they're excited, obviously, but said, look, if we're going to make this work, please be patient with us because um, yeah. there was like nearly three weeks of negotiation just getting all these contracts and clauses and sorting everything out just so that – and then all of a sudden a client, um, she came to her office and said, right, everyone's happy, all the solicitors are happy, and then she sat down – and you know, signed off on both the purchase and the sell. And I said, "That's how you buy. That's how you buy and sell a property in thirty seconds." Boom. Um, but where that was really helpful that we were a part of that process is often I think, and this is no discredit to solicitors, but they fight very, very hard in terms of locking the deal very, very tightly for their clients specifically. Whereas often an agent's um, job in the middle is to try and mediate between these parties in order to get the deal together. Yeah, um, I guess as you started your story, I was like, "Oh, you've." kind of been superseded by someone coming and you haven't really done the job of selling the home, in inverted commas. Yeah. But, yeah, there's so much more behind the scenes that you are doing and you are mediating that Absolutely, actual yep. sale. Yeah. So there is kind of this monstrous duty that you're still performing that could be gone unseen. Yeah. And I guess it's part of that whole, the commission, and as you said before, you've got a different structure for, we haven't got into all the marketing and stuff, but mm. there's still... Mm the service that we are providing to assist in that. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, your contract could be written in crayon and... Yeah, like exactly. Well, another, yourself. another thing too is that all, then all of a sudden, we've got all these agreements. Then the owner's solicitor who the ha- unit she's buying sends back a contract that says, and now we've added this clause. I'm thinking, hang on, when did this Where come? Where did this come from? So, yeah, so it's, it's amazing how um, quickly uh, these scenarios can chop and change. And regardless if it's, you know, se- buying and selling can be very difficult. Or it can get very sticky. Yep. But, you know, sometimes, obviously, you do have those perfect scenarios where someone gets introduced, they buy it, and it works out just perfectly. But it's not always the case. And I think what can happen often in these private scenarios is that many, many clients, and they're not always thinking through what, you know, if, if, if I do this, it means that this is a consequence. So, you know, it's like, okay, I might sell and get the money I want today, but I'll, I've still got to buy something within that time frame. And all of a sudden, if you've, let's just say, someone's knocked on your door, offered you a price that you want, well, that's great. And then all of a sudden, you've got, oh, the money's going to be my account in 30 days. But now you've only got 30 days. To find to your find next dream home. Or, and, so and then I'll, you've got to hope that settles as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, so... Um, on, on that note, then, uh, we've got Paddy calling in, but I'll just finish off to say, well, then, all of a sudden, you're under pressure and you can't make a good decision because you don't have any time left. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we, uh, we've got Mr. Berry phoning in. So let's yeah, let's see. Hopefully, we've set this up right and he'll just come straight through the mics. Cool. Are you with us, brother? Yeah, sure am. Patricia hey. Berry. How you doing, mate? How's it going, boys? How's things over in Viva Las Vegas? Uh, busy. I'm actually getting free stuff. <laughs> oh, I could imagine, mate. It's all the um, oh, all yeah, the magic a, shows and and Cirque du Soleil you've been going to. <laughs> exactly, and the Elvis concerts. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, back to back six Elvis concerts, one after the other. <laughs> and Elvis's weight changes. Yeah. <laughs> the evolution oh, of Elvis. Skinny Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> when you come in, you all get a it's massive funny. peanut butter yeah. sandwich. <laughs> you know what I like the most about that Elvis that I had the photo with? What's yeah. that? He was actually from New Zealand. Ah. Oh, you kidding me? And he used to be a marine biologist. Oh, that's great! Well, I thought you were going to say he was a a real estate agent, and he wasn't actually dressed up. (laughs) Yeah, that would be amusing if he was a real estate agent. To to a few of my dearest friends are marine biologists, and I can understand with the uh, challenges it is for them to secure long term contracts. I'd imagine being an Elvis impersonator (laughs) is probably more secure work. (laughs) (laughs) Who knows? But yeah, it was just cracking me up when he was telling me his life story and how he ended up being Elvis. Oh, that's great. All right, so give us a rundown of what's been happening over there, mate. We've just been doing a little bit of um, fluffing and, and getting our way through it. We've been being a little bit naughty, but I actually think we stayed on track pretty I think well. We got on there, yeah. yeah. Good segue, good... good yeah. Yeah. Maybe we don't need him. No. Nah. Should we just leave him? No, let's there? hang up. Yeah, yeah fair <laughs> enough. Look, if that's what it is, guys, totally understand. <laughs> you, you'll just um, go and get an Elvis yeah, we'll outfit and... <laughs> Move to the big smoke. <laughs> I won't come. I won't come back. I'll just, uh, you know, walk down the road, pick up a suit, and just it, that's hit it. the stages and see what happens. <laughs> you did used to have some pretty impressive sideburns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'll grow those sideburns back and <laughs> yell I'm home and hosed. <laughs> All right, uh, so hit us with some Iman details. Yeah, man, well, just wrapping on day three, actually. So I've just finished um, the last session of day three. There's one more to go, but I've taken the time out to talk to you guys instead. And then we're going to have to do a bit more of that drinking and beer stuff, I guess, because there's another networking function straight after. That's a shame. But there has been a little bit of working amongst all, I guess, as well. <laughs> yeah, so today's been interesting. I've had a lot of people talking about eye buying, which I didn't mm. even know existed two days ago. We just had a quick um, chat about that before. About eight hours. Yeah, I've got about eight hours worth of knowledge, so I'm not an expert on the topic, but it is an interesting concept. So eye buying is basically massive websites like yourrealestate.coms of America. Um, you can go to their website, put in your property detail, and they will tell you what they're prepared to pay for your property on the spot with one click. Is it the um, website that's buying it or is it they got clients in the background? No, that's exactly right. I did not know this and it took me a while to figure it out. And I over lunch today with an American agent. Mm. Uh, she filled me in. It's actually the website that is buying it as physical stock to resell on their website. Oh, so they're wow. basically buying the properties off book. So to the general public, Nobody knows the property's ever been for sale. Mm. They're buying it off book. They're doing whatever work needs to be done to it. So say it needs, you know, some painting or holes to be rectified or garden tidied up. And then they're putting the property back on the market and selling it off. They're um, that's what the word's been used a fair bit around these halls the last couple of days is mm. they're flipping property. Uh, they don't see it that way. Uh, they believe they're offer- offering buyers with a choice. That- Sometimes buyers need access to cash, obviously, quick and fast. And they're prepared to take a loss on that for the reassurance of a quick sale with an escrow or, sorry, I'm talking American now, yeah. with a settlement period that happens quick and effectively for them. Yep. So, yeah, there are advantages to it, but it also is a little bit on the crazy and scary side as well. Then when they put it back up to market, what they're trying to do is basically be the Amazon of real estate sales. So the feeling you get when you buy something from Amazon and it transacts nice and easily, the the parcels ship nice and quickly and it arrives to you ASAP. So as you were describing the process before, I was just thinking like this is something that Amazon will probably eventually do. Like you can buy all the household items and the house from Amazon. But it's yeah. funny that you've you've mentioned yeah. that as the same thing. Well the way these guys that work at these companies, so we've had today and a company called Open Door on the stage who do eye buying and they gave an explanation about how the product works. Uh, they had the CEO of Zillow, which is the world's largest real estate website. Mm. He got on stage and talked about how they're utilizing it within their business. And another person from Redfin, who's another company that specializes in this space, all giving their explanation as to where it fits into the market, what it's there for, and how it works. I don't think it's for, it's not going to fit every buyer, and it's not about it fitting every buyer. It's about an option there for a buyer that needs that service. Mm. Uh, in my head, I guess I could see, um, and you've probably experienced this too, John, that buyer's motivation changes dramatically when something they want is available. Like, you know, when you bought a house and it's subject to sale and then another buyer comes along and you've got that fear of missing out, yeah. you might be prepared to take a small loss on your property if it means that you can secure the next property of your dream. They're trying to describe it, I guess, like when you buy a brand new car, like the trading service, you know you can get more for it if you sell it privately, but can you be bothered? To sell it privately do you just want to take the trading price and move on yeah yeah because well, one thing i said to aaron before so, was it you know if anyone called up and said look i want to sell my house 20 percent below market value would be very quickly be able to come up with a you know a, a multitude of contacts and be prepared to purchase it but rather than having to go through an agency and you know take that punt they're just saying well we'll give you the cash in your you know in your account tomorrow yeah so 48 to 72 hours um you'll get a formal cash unconditional offer received to you for you to either accept or reject. No option for negotiation. Their algorithm works out what the property's worth and that's it. If you like it, great, take it. If not, you can obviously explore other options. What is interesting is that over 40% of Americans now get one of these offers generated before they make a decision. I was just thinking um, But only 2.5% are actually, actually take up these offers. So it's not a huge market segment, but it has grown from 0.5% two years ago to 2.5% mm. now. So it has had growth in the space, but it's not about to take over the world as anything. It's just there as an option for people if they need that quick sale and that quick turnaround. Unreal. I guess it's definitely something to uh, keep our eyes on and, and look for, see kind of any more growth in the future and see if it if it branches out further into Australia mm-hmm. in the future. Well, yeah, I guess for me, where I can see it being value is millennials. They want that click process. They don't want to, like you look at Uber, millennials just love the fact that you can jump in an Uber, not pay, get out and go away. Mm. Um, and that's potentially is, is a quick, fast and easy process that just gets you you don't even have to show your house or prepare it for sale. It's just done. Just done, so yeah. It's a very interesting concept. Well, and I'm it's gonna... definitely been one that's been a big, big talk over the last 
sort of two days here at the conference. Well, I remember speaking to a um, a trainer, Lee Woodward. Um, he's a like a real estate trainer in Australia, and he liked that. Loved the idea of a buy now button. The only challenge, I suppose, is that yep. it's the legislation and the contracts that slow the process down in the, in the larger sense because you've got that long transfer period. Yeah, well, I think that's potentially what will be the thing that maybe sticking points in Australia is we do have fairly heavy legislation when it comes to selling property and mm. um, who can be buying property direct from an owner. Obviously, as real estate agents, if we want to buy property direct from an owner, we need to pay fair market value. So yep. as an agency, 414 Real Estate can't go buy a property 20% less. Our legislation doesn't allow us to. We'll potentially lose our license. So yeah. it is going to be interesting to see how it can work or will work in Australia. Mm. But Make no mistake, it will come. It's just a question of how long before it does come. Yeah, yeah. But there's an interesting um, quote, um, and I thought I'd get my quote on because, you know, J-Mac loves his quotes, Aaron, so <laughs> yeah. I worked I pretty have, hard to... I don't have a pad attack button, though. What, why use 30 words <laughs> when five will do? Well, Brian Inman, Inman, who is the person that's created this conference and who's been in this industry space for a long time, said this on stage today, and I really liked it. Uh, It's a way of looking at where agents fit into the picture moving forward. Mm. Consumers will lead the way. You may not be the captain of the boat, but you will be the one that helps people get on and off the boat safely. And I thought that's an interesting look at where agents might be in the future. So, yeah, at the moment, we're so used to being the captain and being in charge of the whole process. And now I think we need to change our mindset moving forward that potentially our role will still be there. It's just going to be a different type of role. Mm. John's smile's just gone from ear to ear. He's like, yes, I've got something new to you. <laughs> well, 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 and John, if that, appears, if that appears in your coffee table book, then there's hell to pay. Yeah, there'll, 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 be, uh, there'll be Patrick Berry in there. I'll, I'll, I'll credit where credit's due. Patrick hey, Berry, hey, I stole it from uh, someone else, but in man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that was quite an interesting look. Mm. Um, some of the other interesting things is obviously millennials have been the talk around the table a fair bit. As as we've spoken about in our previous shows, sure. they do make up 50% of the world's population and are expected to become a large portion of the buying and selling segment. A couple of things that were quite interesting is millennials are the hardest demographic to deal with from a showing homes perspective. A couple of agencies here in the States have actually started working on ways to make open homes available from 6 o'clock in the morning through to 9 o'clock at night. So actually opening up the window of opportunity for millennials to look at properties Mm. uh, or for people in general and coming up with ways for them to actually look at the properties by themselves about the agent needing to be there. So there's a lot of tech being invested in reinventing the way the open home is performed. So that could be interesting moving forward just to see if that tech arrives here and if we have for instance you know got a brand new house out at brighton that's never been lived in that's vacant having that facility available for someone to book a time at a time that suits them rather than the time that we tell them they have to be there yeah i guess it takes a so bit of the that, trouble out of you've got to fit into my schedule i've got to fit into yours everybody's so busy and hustle bustle if i can go and show my partner at five o'clock at night i put in a little code and it lets me in the house and it records the data and it's just like, boom, here we go. Yep. Yeah, portable security cameras that are in the home that sense motion, like you have a certain amount of time you're allowed in the property for before you've got to vacate. So they're talking a lot of different methods to still keep the property secure for the vendor, but at the same time, possibilities for people to view in their own time. And the way they described it is that at the end of the day, there are shift workers. And obviously in America here, there's a lot of people that are on the shift work schedule. Some people don't finish work to, you know, 10 or 11 or 12 o'clock at night. So they can't fit in the conventional time of a real estate agent. So they're very big on talking about tech and how real estate agencies are going to have to adapt to be able to meet the modern consumer and what the modern consumer will look like in the next few years. Well, you can see where, say, um, we'll just stick with Amazon for a second, is that the whole premise of that business is click, click, and it delivers straight to your door, where I suppose this new tech is uh-huh. you know, it's just to say that, you know, you could argue that the agent could get in the way of buying that house because the agent's actually limited on time, therefore it can't fit with the buyer's schedule. So it's that technology is about getting, you know, making that process much easier for the consumer again. Yeah, for sure. And look, Sarah Bell um, touched on it earlier in one of our earlier podcasts about filling the gap. Yeah, like AI technology and bot technology isn't there to replace agents, nor is any of this tech that I'm talking about today to to work in conjunction with the agent. You still Mm. need agents to help build the connection, build the rapport, but the bot can fill in the gaps when the agent's not available. So it still allows uh, millennials and um, people to get the information they need there and then, but still offer flexibility for the agent to have a work-life balance as well, I guess. 
Yeah, absolutely. I guess we kind of needed a bot to uh, hit the record buttons on a few of your interviews earlier in the week, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm glad it's uh, 12.30 or whatever it was when I was texting Yaz. Uh, I had an epiphany and figured out what the problem was, so I'll be excited to get the new versions of those interviews up for the, for the people to re-listen to. I did find it really funny that you were lying in bed in Vegas thinking about the recordings of your interviews. I was like, man, this guy's committed. Like, he should be down at the table losing all his money. But no, he's lying in bed thinking about us. Yeah, I'll let, I'll let you guys in another second. I was probably the only person in Las Vegas on Saturday night that was in bed by 7 o'clock asleep. Oh. <laughs> man, <laughs> safe to say I, the city of leading, sin indeed. Leading the crazy Vegas life. <laughs> I spent a whole day in bed in Vegas, not hungover, just because my bed was so comfy that I was like, it's not a, it's not a waste of a day if I... I just stay yeah. in bed. It was it was that comfy. Well, I even the next time I went back, stayed in the same casino, went and checked all the bedding, yeah. and wrote it down so that when I got home, I could look into how expensive oh, it would be. That's brilliant to recreate. <laughs> that's brilliant. My Vegas bed. <laughs> oh, that is too good. As it was too expensive. <laughs> yeah, too Al- expensive. alas, it has not happened. <laughs> Uh, well, at least you got to enjoy that 24 hours of just in of the space. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know back when I was a teacher and you'd go to learning things like professional development and stuff, there'd always be keywords and takeaways that would come out. Like you'd leave mm. and you'd just be like, man, they've hammered home this word. Yeah. As long as I take this word home with me, I've learned something. That's the one key thing you invested the money for. Yeah. yeah. Have you got anything like that over there, Pat? Yeah, the one word everyone keeps saying around this town is cocktails. It just seems to be. <laughs> oh, no, 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 mate. mate. Like, that's every conference ever. There's got to be a kind of conference. Yeah, there's got to be something more that comes out other than cocktails. But I think what the word you're looking for is probably transparency. Uh, that's been the buzzword oh, yeah. on the stage most of the time. Um, a lot of the speakers have been talking about how transparency is key for the modern day agents, um, mm. how purchases they want to know exactly what's happening. They don't want agents like agents of the past to be the gatekeepers of the information and to only tell them what they want to hear. They want transparency to be able to really get a good understanding of what people are saying about their property, what um, the property price is, how they need to negotiate, that side of it. Um, to give you a good example, I was talking to someone at a lunch today that I had and she has a website called ratemyporch.com. And it's really clever. You pay a service, you upload a heap of photos or the agent can upload a heap of photos before you go to market. And heaps of people can comment, I guess, describe it as house porn. People that love to, you know, just surf the net looking at properties. Oh, it's they like hot or not. Hot or not. Yeah. 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 So, I um, love that we both are saying, like, oh, yeah. Hot yeah. Hot yeah. I, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> hot. 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 Yeah, so <laughs> Sorry, mate. It's a really cool website, I guess, to give that honest feedback to the, back to the owner because then the owner, if they can see it's come from, you know, 20, 30 different people, then it makes them understand that maybe I do need to paint that room out. Maybe I do need to declutter this space to have a better chance of achieving the best price for my property. So there's heaps of tech here at the moment that that people are pitching and Startup Alley people are talking about, which is all about improving the transparency between agent and client. Mm. Um, So that's probably one of the key takeaways, I guess, that I've, I've seen. Um, and then it's obviously the last two te- key takeaways is just how to adapt your agency to work with the new coming coming to the marketplace, which is millennials, and obviously where the market is going to go moving forward with things like iBuy. Yeah, that's awesome. I guess um, in this internet age, information is key, and it's kind of that thing where you'll do your research and everybody tries to be as well-informed as possible. So basically what you're saying is if it's out there, the agent's job is to be transparent and be like, look, Here's all the info. I'm going to give it to you and you guys do with it what you can. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much like what we do with this podcast each week. It's not about big noting ourselves or promoting McGregor First National or 414 Real Estate. Mm. It's about giving information to the general public and hoping they get something from it to help them better understand what our industry is about. I like this idea of trust through action. So it's not just, oh, because you're you, I'll, I'll trust you, which obviously reputation plays a part in that. But there's just such more of a demand of proof that, okay, you say you're trustworthy, give me the information and I'll make my own judgment. And yeah. if, 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 if I yeah. feel like I have enough, I'll be prepared to make a decision. And look, uh, websites like ratemyagent.com.au, um, they're fantastic for that aspect back home. Mm. Right. My agent are actually here as well. They've just launched into the U.S. marketplace this weekend. Yep. So I think that there's definitely that belief there that um, agents don't want to be known as untrustworthy or you know slimy people that sort of you know just take all your money. We want 
people to understand we're here to help and that's what we get, what we enjoy out of this job is helping people achieve their, their property goals. Yeah, I like that. And then all this new technology is really about enhancing that, always the, the trust between the industry, the consumer and the clients. Yeah, and it's nothing from an agency perspective to be scared of. I think it's actually going to help make our jobs easier because we'll be able to have the more in-depth honest conversations with clients mm. and they'll feel better about it because we'll be able to back it up with, you know, clear data and clear evidence of what we're, we're relaying through to them. Yeah. So you're no longer the captain of the ship, you're the navigator. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Pretty much. <laughs> nice callback, buddy. <laughs> As Braddy Man says, it was something like that. So yeah, nice work, J-Mac. You worked that in nicely. <laughs> That'll be in the coffee book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, mate. Well, I think so, what we'll do is we'll let you get back to uh, all the festivities and learning that you're doing over there. If you do run into Brad in Man, uh, let him know that we're available next year to do some keynotes if he's interested. <laughs> yeah. Sure, mate. <laughs> well, we'll do a panel calling, discussion. <laughs> they're calling my name from the other room because they're holding beers in their hands, so it looks like I've got no choice but to leave you guys for the moment. That's a high-quality <laughs> problem, Paddy. <laughs> 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 All right, mate. No it was, problem, guys. It was good that you uh, took the time out to uh, give us a call and keep uh, sending through those interviews that you get. Maybe have a few beers and try and trying get to work, Elvis. Yeah, trying to work on a couple more at the moment, so we'll see how we go. A legend. Awesome. awesome All the mate. best, mate. Enjoy. All right, cool. See ya. Yeah. All right, that was a bit of fun talking with Paddy. That is, uh, it's pretty cool, really. He sounds super excited to be over there. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of right in his wheelhouse, just all the tech and all the future is. Definitely a futurist, that boy. Yeah, and look, I, I, that's one thing you'd mentioned that, you know, we shouldn't, and a lot of those um, speakers saying, don't be concerned. It's just, you know, the, any service industry that ever gets disrupted just evolves. So that's um, that's realistically what's to, what's happening. So yeah, yeah, the whole world is kind of evolving. If if you were to think what we were, for, well, you've had stories about the buses that used to ride people, agents around to show off houses and stuff. Yeah, that's it, and the big and tours. And the newspapers, yeah. and so the way everything evolves is you've just got to be on that bus, you well, could even, say. Well, even if, uh, if we've got time to, with the discussion we had before to actually have it in the show, was that, you know, the evolution of the agent, rather than doing all the introductions, they're stepping in halfway to help get the deal all working, you know. Yeah, for um, sure, yeah. yeah you kind so, of step in at the time of need yeah, rather exactly. than being sought out. It's kind of knowing when to, not strike, but when to step in and be like, hey, I'm here to help you out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then that, and that's just pivoting all the different levels of your service. So I think it's uh, it's... Yeah, it's scary and exciting at the same time, I suppose, depending on who you are and how you're looking at it. Yeah. Look, I think it's it's good to always be on your toes and be a little bit scared and a little bit excited about what's to come. It's kind of, if you're just kind of going through the motions, yeah, you're not really going to get that far. I'm sure you've got an anecdote for this. Well, um, the, the, old, the only thing that I could think of is that um, the, the, the days of the average agent will be gone yep. and only those that have exceptional knowledge and service will be able to provide value that people are prepared to pay for. Yeah, for because sure. Because everything else is going to fit that, going to fill those holes. Yeah, yeah, mm. definitely. So you've got to, got to go above and beyond to, or you've got to be, you've got to be the pro. Yeah, to exactly. Yeah, be the pro. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, like we said, worst case scenario, we'll just be uh, full-time podcasters. Yeah, look, <laughs> man, i am enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> All right, sweet. It was good. We've uh, we've had a little chat. We've had a bit of fun without Pat, and then we had some fun with Pat. So cool. Um, thanks everybody for listening again. Hopefully, you can check out some of the little mini episodes we've put up as well with mm. current and correct sound. And um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for sticking with us through all the growing pains. And and we'll be back next week with with more pod and probably Pat. Hopefully, unless he's he'll be back. Yeah. Unless he's Elvis impersonating over there. I hope he's got his sideburns back. Yeah, geez, that'd be good. They're amazing. Yeah, they were. <laughs> all right, guys. Cool. See you. See you. Bye. Real Estate has been operating within the northern suburbs of Hobart since 2006. With their innovative approach to marketing and managing your property, they have all your property needs covered. Find out more by visiting them today at 414.com.au. As a family-run business, First National Real Estate McGregor understands that the property market can be stressful. However, with a strong team in both sales and rentals, we are here to guide you through the property maze. Find out more today at mcgregorfm.com.
And now for a legal disclaimer. You have been listening to The Property Pod, produced and edited by 414 Media House in conjunction with 414 Real Estate and McGregor First National Propriety Limited. This podcast is general information only and the thoughts and views expressed is the opinion of our panel and listeners should always seek then use their own investigation into any topic we discuss to ensure they fully understand their own situation. It does not constitute and should not be relied on as purchasing, selling, financial or investment advice or recommendations expressed or implied and it should not be used as an invitation to take up any agent or investment services. No investment decision or activity should be undertaken on the basis of this information without first seeking qualified and professional advice.